We are joined on the dais by Arizona head coach Tommy Lloyd, along with sophomore guard Jaden Bradley and senior guard Caleb Love. And we'll open up with a quick statement from Coach Lloyd. Really proud of our guys. Um, Dayton's a heck of a ball club. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that we could really come out and, and get after them defensively and, and really, you know, just play with a bunch of active energy and kind of get them on their heels. And we did. Uh, unfortunately, they responded. And, uh, but that's how these games go. And, and, you know, we've been really talking about just being steady, you know, staying locked in, obviously not getting too high, not getting too low. And even as a staff, you know, we have a pretty active emotional staff. So we've talked about our, us kind of taking a breath and just, you know, helping our guys stay in that zone and, uh, and, and, and really proud of them. I mean, JB played amazing today and really did a great job controlling that game. Caleb, you know, got off to a great start. You know, had a rough patch, but he bounced back from that, which is that's what winners do. So really, really proud of these guys, and, uh, and, and we're excited and honored uh, to be able to continue to play. Thank you, Coach. And now we will open up for questions for our student athletes right here. Uh, Jason Shear, Wildcat Authority. Uh, Jaden and Caleb, the, what goes into being able to, to show poise? They, they make that 10 nothing run down the half and get a little bit closer in the second half, and then you guys kind of never wavered. I'll just say, you know, shout out to our coaches. You know, Coach Murph and Coach Ken did a great job with the scout. And uh, I just think halftime we came out, trusted the plan, even though Dayton came back with a run. And, you know, we just stayed poised. Yeah, I think that's key. Uh, just staying calm in those moments when, you know, they're kind of making a run, um, you know, not kind of pa not, not panicking. And so um, I think that's what we did. And we, you know, stuck to the plan, like JB said, and uh, we got the job done. Okay, front left, please. Hey, Hayden Silly, Arizona PBS. Um, Jaden and Coach, I wanted to ask you about Caleb's run in the first half. I mean, 13 points, um, 5 of 7. When he gets it going like that, um, just what is it able to do for you guys offensively? How does it open things up? Uh, you know, Caleb's a great player. He can get it going at any time. So, you know, just playing within the offense and, you know, him fighting the shots. And, you know, I think Big O does a great job kind of creating uh, double teams and is able to get Caleb, uh, get him going. So. I mean, for, for me, it's pretty simple. I mean, I, I obviously, he's a great player, and, and I knew he was going to play good today. I mean, I knew he had the look, you know. Um, you know, the, the, it's a rough patch for these guys. You know, Caleb's been through a lot in his career, and, you know, you hit another rough patch where, you know, you start getting a bunch of accolades and honors, and, you know, you start thinking about a lot of things. And I think he just had to play his way through it a little bit, and uh, I, I knew today he was going to play good. There's just no way he wasn't going to play good on this stage, you know, after, you know, you know, he had a good stretch in the Long Beach State game and then didn't play great in the Pac-12 tournament. And the dude's a baller, and, and, and I have complete trust in him. Okay, front right. Davis Domestic, the Crimson. Uh, question for Caleb. Wanted to congratulate you. With today's scoring output, you are now amongst the active players. You have the most points in March Madness uh, history. What about March and this time brings out the best in you? I think, you know, it's just a big stage. Uh, me wanting to play in these moments, uh, these type, these big time games. And, you know, I've dreamed of this as a kid, uh, you know, watching March Madness, uh, wanting to be on this stage. And I think um, I just kind of rise to the occasion. I, you know, whatever I can do to, you know, get the team to win, whether that's scoring, uh, rebounding, playmaking, whatever I got to do, defense, um, that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, third row, right? Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. Caleb, uh, you had that game two years ago against Baylor where you guys were up big and then you went out of the game and they were able to come back. You went in overtime and all that. Being able to stay, keep yourself in the game and be able to help the team get through it. I mean, did any of that come into your head? No, I wasn't really thinking about that uh, two years ago. That was two years ago. But um, I was just trying to, you know, figure any any uh, way I can get this team to win as far as um, helping this team. And uh, Coach Lloyd has stuck with me uh, all year and uh, kind of, you know, keeping me, um, you know, team-oriented. And so uh, that's what I've been focusing on. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been succeeding uh, so far. Okay, we are going to go. Do you have a follow-up? Sorry. For, for Tommy. Uh, the second half, you uh, you managed, you started to take the air out of the ball toward the end. What was that? Uh, what was the the point of that? And then also just going with the small lineup that you were using down the stretch. Well, you know, I th thought they get pretty comfortable against the looks that we were giving us. You know, and, and obviously, you know, we knew it was going to be an interesting dynamic. You know, when you have a a mobile pick and pop, you know, kind of athletic big like Holmes, and then you have a you know a big Hoss like Big O. Um, you know, there's going to be some give and take. And, you know, our, our plan with Big O really got us off to a good start early. They got a little comfortable and started attacking a little bit. So I just wanted to give them a different look. And, and, and I think we kind of did it right for a media because I wanted to get a look at it. 
and then it worked. I think we got a turnover the first time we did it. And, and so I was like, hey, let's just ride this thing out and see if we can kind of change the course of the game. And maybe they had to start attacking us a little bit differently and get them out of their rhythm. Okay, front left, please. Or here. Coach, when, uh, when Dayton went on that. Uh, we're, we'll hold the coach's questions so after we're done with the student athletes. That's fine, please. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Zoom really quick. We have a Dan Totoro on Zoom. Uh, do you have any questions for our student athletes? Dan Tortora, wake up call DT.com to both of the student athletes. Just what you can say about, uh, you know, obviously as you advance to the Sweet 16, there's been adversity at different times this season. Can you pinpoint a moment that you felt like kind of was a, an adjustment point or a turning point for this team that you can see helped you get to where you are right now? I think we've been doing that all season long, making adjustments, um, you know, adapting to certain, you know, teams or, you know, schemes that we've been uh, playing against. Um, I don't think it's really a turning really was a turning point. I think we, Coach Lloyd has been, you know, working on our culture, working on, um, you know, different ways we can, you know, attack teams and things like that. So uh, I think we've been doing that all year. We've been working on it all year and uh, it's been preparing us for this uh, March Madness. Jaden? Um, you know, I just feel like just coming out and after a tough loss or something like that, like teams are throwing different zones at us and stuff. We're doing a great job coming in practice, open-minded, you know, just working and trusting each other and, trusting our coaches and our game plan. I mean, I'll add to that. There was a moment when we were over in Israel and Abu Dhabi. I mean, I think we all knew we had a special group. I mean, the, the connection we had and, and we were able to get with each other over there and just, it was really special, you know, because people were maybe questioning how we were going to be chemistry-wise. And, 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 and these guys are elite uh, with, with chemistry, and, and, and I'm really proud of them, and, and I'm just proud to be associated with them. Okay, one last question for our student-athletes, John. John Coon, Associated Press. Um, Caleb and Jaden, when uh, you know towards the last two minutes of the first half, you guys come in for turnovers as a team. But in the second half, you only had four turnovers of the entire half. What did you kind of do to adjust to their on-ball pressure that cut down on the turnovers in the second half? Uh, just trusting in the plan. You know, we saw, we watched the clips at halftime. Um, you know, they came out pressuring the ball, trying to turn us over. So I feel like second half, we did a great job with our, uh, our press break. You know, just not dribbling too much, passing it, you know, taking time off the clock. Yeah, pretty much the same thing with JB said. I think uh, we adapted to, you know, what they were doing, kind of running and jumping uh, sporadically. And uh, we were just trying to get open for, you know, JB having outlets um, and for Colin and, you know, Pella uh, just being open and available so, you know, we can get the ball up the floor. Okay, we will now excuse our student athletes. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, congratulations. Good luck next week. Okay, we'll start with uh, questions for Coach Lloyd. We'll start here in the bottom. Coach, when, when Dayton goes on that 10 nothing run to, to close the half, um, how are you able to kind of regroup and not let emotions take over in that moment? Well, you know, you. You got to know it's going to come. You kind of know it's going to come. So you kind of pre-plan for it, you know. And, and you know, when, when we scouted them, we, one of the things we picked up on is they were a team of runs both ways. They, they had a, a number of, you know, significant 8-0, 10-0 runs. <coughs> and then they'd also given up a number of those as well. And we saw it in the Nevada game, you know. Uh, I'm just excited. I'm relieved, excited, however you want to put it, that we got out to a good lead so we could kind of absorb that run because they maybe had to go to their press earlier than they'd wanted. And sometimes if – you know, you don't get that big lead early. You know, they, they, you, so you get it a little bit later, they go to a press, and then it feels like it can unravel, and you don't have time to go regroup at halftime. And, and our guys did a good job of, of just regrouping at halftime. We kind of changed our, our plan of attack a little bit and uh, just played with better fundamentals overall and handling their pressure. Okay, third row, right? Tommy, uh, it looked like Kylan might have hurt his hand early in the game or whatever, and he was out for a little bit, but then when he came back in, he just his shot wasn't off, and he didn't, wasn't showing that aggressiveness. Um, was that when you decided you wanted uh, Jaden to, to be the guy doing that? Well, I mean, I was just kind of watching how the game was just playing. And, you know, it was nothing, you know, I mean, Kylan made two huge free throws in that game. And, you know, I kind of ended up with a lineup out there that was doing well. And, you know, sometimes you ride that. And I thought JB was doing a really good job against that, that pressure up top of handling it and not panicking. And, you know, even, you know, kind of went at him a couple of times, you know, and those are high risk plays when you're attacking a press like that, but that's how you go. You want to go downhill with the press and, and before they can set their defense. So I, I was just, you know, proud of the way JB responded. You know, Kylan was awesome on, on Thursday, you know, and, and when you have a great team, you know, it's, it's different guys' nights on, on different nights. So 
um, just really proud of, of, of the whole team and how they handled it. And Kylan was great in the locker room, so no concerns for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tommy, Steve Back Rivera, all sports com. If you can expand on Jaden's play. I, I, all year he's been biding his time, biding his time. Today was that time. Yeah, I mean, I mean you can maybe say he's biding his time. <clears throat> but when you're on an elite team, you know, guys have to make sacrifices. And that's the only way it works. And, and, and JB's character is so high. And he's an absolute winner. Um, I mean, I, I told him after the game, I appreciate him, you know, hanging with it. And I appreciate him hanging with me. Um, he, he's going to be an elite player. He's going to end up being a, a one of the Arizona greats at the end of the day. And, and him accepting that role this year has allowed us to be the team we are today. So I'm really thankful for that. Okay, third row, right? Uh, Coach, wanted to ask you about two players. It, it seemed like, especially there was a, a span in the first half where Krivis played some of his best basketball of the year, especially defensively. And then just thoughts on Keyshawn today. I mean, Keyshawn's a, I mean, he, he's a dog. He's a winner. Um, you know, I mean, you know, that dunk was attempt was crazy, you know, but, but I also think it sets a little bit of a tone. Um, he, he helps us at both ends of the floor, and it's the way the things we can incorporate in our defensive game plan because of him. I mean, he guards like a guard, but tough enough to guard bigs, uh, makes him elite, gets tough rebounds, you know, you know, finishes around the basket when he has to, makes a timely three. I thought that three he hit at the start of the second half was huge. I think we were six, and he put it back up to nine right away. And, and that just, you know, gave us a little more breathing room to get settled in in the second half. So he's an absolute winner. And Big Mo is really coming around. Big Mo is going to be a great player. It's just going through some of the, the normal growing pains, you know, of a, a, a young player from Europe playing high-level college basketball. And, and, and I really think he and Umar can be a heck of a one-two punch. We've really been encouraging him just to be more physical. And, and we really wanted, you know, Holmes, you know, when O's out of the game, you know, we wanted his rest to be going against Crevis, and we wanted to go right at him. And I thought he had a couple of great plays. He had a finish early that just kind of rolled around and luckily went in. And, and then he had a big dunk on kind of a broken play. So, uh, and then, then he had some good plays defensively as well. So, yeah, those, those guys really contributed. You have time for one more here. Hey, Coach, uh, Davis Domestic, the Crimson. Your bench outscored the Dayton bench 23-2 to two today. We've talked about JB. We've talked about Big Mo. Um, so who else are you looking for to step up these next couple of games? Well, I mean, you know, we have a pretty solid eight-man rotation. And, and the, the beautiful thing is, you know, I don't have to sit there and worry about one guy playing great for us to win. And that, that's a real luxury. I thought KJ's minutes were really impactful today. You know, he didn't, he didn't necessarily have a great game uh, on Thursday, but he bounced back. And, and that's what winners do. I mean, you know, it, it, and I know it's an old cliche, but every dog has its day. And uh, in our program, I guess it's every cat has its day. And, uh, and so really proud of these guys. It's an absolute group of winners, and we can't wait to play next week. Okay, one last question in the back right there, Coach. Yeah, Tommy, uh, you, uh, in the second half, I think you told the guys to relax a little, a few, couple, three times. How do you tell a team to relax when you guys push and like to push? Well, the first thing you do, you, i got to tell my staff to relax. They get pretty excited. Um, and then, uh, I, I mean, listen, you, you can play fast with great fundamentals. And, and, that, and that's what we strive to do. Um, you know, and, and at the end of the game, when you get that lead, you know, you want to manage it. I think Kylan took a tough, you know, kind of shot that he's capable of making, but it was early in the shot clock. We hadn't made any passes. I think you got to make them come out and guard you a little bit more. You're getting closer to the bonus. I mean, that, that's how you need to execute at the end of the games. You just got to have a great understanding of time and score, but you also have to enough cur have enough courage to make good plays. So it's a little bit of a fine line. But uh, I thought our guys did a good group, of, a good job as a group today managing that game and kind of handling the pressure and, and all the scenarios at the end. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Congratulations. Guys. Good luck next week. Yeah, let's go.